time to take a look at what is happening in international football with regards to European League fixtures and the headlines that we've been reading in our publications and international papers during the week. And of course, we're going to speak about what happened in midweek on Tuesday. Young boys causing an upset against Man United. Of course, I'm hosting both <laughs> panelists who support that team, Eric Agany and Ken Andrew. Eric, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Do you, you have look to start weak. with that? <laughs> we can start with other people. I still nursing depression. On... Uh, it was a bad day in the office. Uh, I don't know what to say. I think uh, Olegana has to do better with the, uh, the timing of his substitutions because I think uh, his subs cost us that game. Uh, it seems he's not learning and uh, that may be his undoing factor. And we have the likes of Conte waiting. Uh, he may be sent home <laughs> despite the fact that he's a legend. <laughs> but we need results on the pitch. But I've seen, uh, you know, teammates and even Man United itself, the officials, standing in solidarity with Jesse Lingard following what happened. It seemed, of course, who costed the team to uh, get a thrashing of 2-1. But I've seen how, you know, players have stood firm with him saying that it happens. It's normal for such a thing to happen in football. Yeah, it is. Uh, obviously, he's the one who cost us the second goal, but... Uh, you know, you feel like the manager could have done better with the, uh, the substitutions he had, with the, how he changed the game going into the second half. Uh, Man United seemed like they didn't want to attack at all, despite having Bruno Fernandes, Ronaldo on the pitch. They, they just look like they're going to sit back, and that allowed young boys to really express themselves and really come at them. And so, I think that the biggest question marks will be around Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's decision making in substitution, as he said. We've seen that in the past two seasons, uh, him making substitution or not making the right substitution at times. And uh, with this squad right now, I don't think he should be doing that right now. We should be challenging for the title and the Champions League. But with him making such decisions, that is never going to happen. And when fans, uh, fans of our team start raising such concerns, it becomes very risky for a manager because I've seen what is going through between Pep Guardiola and Manchester City fans after his appeal to them to show up in large numbers in EPL clash against Southampton. And, you know, uh, the sort of musical chairs, it's a bit of exchange between him and the fans to some extent, him saying that, you know, he will call it quits in case fans are annoyed with these comments that they should show up in large numbers. Can such a thing happen at United? Yes, despite the fact that uh, at United, Ole has enjoyed a lot of uh, support from the fans by the fact that uh, he's a legend and uh, from uh, his heroics in 1999, what he did, the fans respect him so much, but the fans want silverware. At the end of the day, uh, 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 he has been calling for depth. Now he's been given the squad that can lift a trophy. If he doesn't uh, make it or he doesn't bring results, then the fans may start calling for him to go home. And uh, with such kind of teams, teams like Liverpool, teams like uh, Manchester United, fans have a lot of say. And when uh, they start asking for the sacking of a manager, we've seen it in the past, uh, the manager uh, eventually will have to go. And right now we have Allegri also, who is, uh, uh, has expressed interest in Manchester United earlier. We have Conte, who is a, a non-winner. You've seen everywhere he's gone, he's won with Inter, he's won with Chelsea, and Olegana has nothing to show of it. And uh, if you look at in all, uh, in all fairness, he's been given more time than any other manager uh, post uh, Ferguson's time. And uh, he has not brought uh, Silva to Manchester United. And uh, that cannot go on for long. What is happening at, say, uh, you know, it had Pep Guardiola's exchange and Manchester City fans? Yeah, you know, he was upset that they, first of all, not a lot of fans showed up. They didn't match the capacity during the game against Leipzig. But, you know, uh, you can't really blame the fans, you know, for them for going a game which City are obviously going to thrash them. And also, again, you know, they're in Manchester. There, there are not enough City fans there. <laughs> but, but for Pep to talk to the fans like that, asking them to be there on Sunday uh, against Southampton, it really, he should have done that. I feel like he should have done that because uh, they have been getting good attendance ever since the government re removed the shackles from the stadiums to have the, the full capacity. It was just that Leipzig game where fans didn't really show up. 
but I think they've been having a, a good capacity in the stadium. But, but I disagree a little bit because what do the Manchester City fans want? Mm -hmm. Pep is playing good football. Uh, Pep has brought silverware. Yeah. Uh, all they can do is support him. You can imagine Pep at Manchester United. Uh, the stadium will be overflowing. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think uh, uh, he has every reason to ask these fans to come and support the team. Because they should rally behind the team. Because if you're playing home, you expect to have full capacity. Because at one given time, you'll go away. Yep. Uh, when they don't travel away, you can understand. But it's just like uh, the, the, the Manchester City fans want to behave like our fans here. Uh, we don't want to go to the, to the stadium to watch the games. And uh, we keep on complaining that uh, the teams are not performing. So I think uh, the Manchester City fans should uh, raise to the challenge and uh, support their team. Because they, they have everything to thank uh, God for. Because they have a manager who is playing uh, good football. They are winning games. They are winning trophies. Uh, what else do you want? In as much as I agree with you, I tend to think that, you know, Europe is not Kenya, where <laughs> supporters and fans of a football club are not passionate about football to an extent that, you know, they can fail to show up. Because in Europe, are you supposed to tell your fans to come in large numbers? Because I think it's their own prerogative to show up. Exactly. Because of the passion they have for this sport. And for the manager... Must they be reminded? For the manager to come out clearly and tell them to come, it means he there's must something wrong. Something. Yeah, there's something wrong. They're really letting the team down. Because there's a time whereby you want uh, uh, that push when you're playing home. And if these fans, they don't need to be reminded to come to the field. They need to come automatically. We've seen teams like Arsenal yes. uh, doesn't win anything, uh, yeah. but the, the, the tickets are so expensive yeah. and the stadium is still full. Yeah. And uh, at least you see for the Arsenal fans, when they don't play well, the fans uh, show it by walking away. At least mm. they showed up, yeah. but they were disappointed. But these city fans are not showing up. And this was the first time. Uh, during Mancini's time, they also did the same. Mm. And he was rallying them, come and support the team. What do they want? They have a, a manager, an, an owner who has pumped in a lot of money. They have very exciting talents. They are playing very beautiful football. Uh, why wouldn't they go to the stadium? Another talking point of the week has been Mino Raiola, a man whose name and United fans don't want to hear. He has revealed that Pogba might be on his way out of Old Trafford to reunite with Juventus after the expiry of his contract. Mm -hmm. What's this whole abalu about Pogba's departure, <laughs> exit, contract extension at United? Yeah, uh, first of all, you know, you have to look at Pogba for his agent to always come out saying these things about his future, you know. He did it last year, last season, and there was a little bit tussle between all the pundits and Pogba, and he's doing it again, and not just Pogba, he also had words about the league and Juve. So, you know, he's, he's a very chaotic man, but I feel like the players have the say and then I can actually tell him, don't speak about my future in public before I give you the green light because he has been doing it too much, you know, for everyone to be settled. The players have to stop him. They must ensure that they keep their, their transfers or their wants silent until the right time is uh, announced by the bodies to unveil their, themselves or want to transfer out from their clubs, but that man is chaotic. <laughs> Can such statements be made of a player without his authorization? I don't think so. I, I think uh, Pogba is also fueling that uh, as a way of blackmail, uh, so that uh, Manchester United will be thrown into panic and uh, maybe they table a better deal on the table. Uh, because uh, we've seen uh, 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 Amino Raiola has a problem as an individual, but I think also the players he represents, uh, 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 he, he ends up undoing them, he ends up not giving them a good deal because you remember uh, there was also the case of Haaland who was supposed to move, uh, didn't move because Mino Raiola was uh, asking for crazy commissions. Uh, so you see, uh, I think uh, Pogba uh, is messing himself up because even if uh, you see, no club will want such bad publicity, even if it is, that's why uh, Real Madrid have not come for him despite him really wanting to go to Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. uh, Juventus have not uh, uh, come for him. Uh, we've seen uh, PSG, him being linked with PSG. They have not come out clearly and said in the past and said we want him. Because they're also fearing the same may happen. Where uh, if you, are, you come to Juventus and then you start fueling such kind of things. No club wants such bad publicity. I, I think I'll say what Gary Neville said, Pogba should just mature up. Uh, because he has he has a problem but generally as a footballer world-class player polished yeah. uh, midfield maestro and a man 
that Man United needs more and have to work very hard and not to part ways with him, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah. Uh, United need him, especially right now that they've brought in three key signings to help yes. them push for the Premier League. I think they'll need Pogba for a few more years for United to really regain their dominance, to really go for the titles year in, year out. But uh, that will not be case because if it, you remember uh, Sir Alex had a problem with uh, Rayola before even Pogba left United and he was still a youngster and the same guy is still problematic right now. So it's either Pogba, as he said, he matures up, he tells the guy to just keep quiet or he ditches the man and uh, focuses on himself at United because he's a crucial play pl player for Legona Social. Let's speak about French League One. Lionel Messi's move from Barcelona to Paris and Germain. I know some people are saying that it's yet to be impactful. It's been a shaky start for him uh, during League One reign. But of course, we should give him time, right? Yeah, he should be given time. I think what, what, what happened, uh, uh, his move was overshadowed by Cristiano Ronaldo's move to Manchester United. Uh, whereby when Cristiano Ronaldo came in, there was an instant impact. Came in, played the first game, scored a brace. And then uh, Lionel Messi has uh, problems adapting to not only life on the field, but also life in, an, in a new country. Because remember, uh, uh, Lionel Messi has not left Spain to play for any other country. This is the first time he's playing out of, uh, uh, away from, from Spain, from Barcelona. And like uh, maybe Cristiano who played in England, went to uh, Spain, went to Italy and is back in England. So uh, he should be given time. Uh, and uh, I think uh, also as a, as, a, as a club, then Paris Saint-Germain has problems because uh, the egos in the dressing room, uh, you saw, uh, they're not really having that impact you'll expect. Because if you look at that team on paper, uh, it's, it's the strongest. But when it comes to the field, you expect uh, them to deliver more, but they're not delivering as you'll expect. So uh, we, we, we cannot doubt uh, Messi's capability. Uh, what I think uh, that it will take him some time to settle in and to start scoring goals. Can you uh, thoughts on Messi's reign at PSG, the French money bags, yeah. and of also Genie, yeah. the guy who left Maybe Liverpool London. and yeah. he has not had a good game since joining the yeah. French League One champions. Yeah, I think again it's just about adapting because Vinalda has also spent a long time of his career in England with Newcastle and Liverpool. Messi leaving Barcelona for the first time since he was a kid. You know, it's going to take time to adjust, but I don't think it's going to take too much time. By the end of the next, after the next international break, I think PSG will have found a rhythm with the, both of them, plus the other guys like Ramos, Nuno Mendes who also came in, they will have gelled, uh, they will have had enough time, and we'll see them perform really great because, you know, they, they, they on paper, they look to be the best team, especially in the Champions League. They're, they're, they're heavyweights, they obviously have a, one of the best players in the world, two, two others alongside him in the attack, so you'd fancy them. And they also have a good coach in Pochettino, who knows how to get the best out of different players. So let's just uh, give them a little bit of time. They adapt, they gel, and uh, Poch settles on his preferred squad, and uh, we will see the best out of PSG. Because as we speak right now, Wolverhampton Wanderers against Brentford so far, still scoreless. Burnley against Arsenal coming up later on at 5 p.m. East African time. Liverpool is playing host to Patrick Vieira's charges, Crystal Palace at the same time. Manchester City against Southampton in a team that their manager Pep Guardiola has been urging fans to show up in large numbers. Norwich up against Watford and Aston Villa will be finishing the day's fixtures against Everton in late kick off at 7.30 p.m. Patrick Vieira, can he bring you know, another upset? Uh, yes. Uh, maybe, because uh, look at what he did against Tottenham. Yeah. Nobody expected a 3 nil, And uh, bearing in mind that uh, he's not played in the midweek, uh, when Liverpool uh, played, uh, played in the midweek against AC Milan, yes. uh, a tough game for them. And uh, as we said earlier on, Liverpool's uh, squad is aging. Most of them may not be able to, to, to give uh, proper performance on a Wednesday and on a, on a, on a Saturday. So he may cause a, a challenge today. Uh, however difficult it is, he'll give uh, Liverpool a run for their money. Yeah. Patrick Vieira. Yeah. Wilfred Zaha, is he such you know, a huge effect uh, uh, on the team and 
is likely to determine the outcome of the clash in their favor? Yeah, obviously Zaha is, is their biggest player. Uh, we know he, what he can do with the ball at his feet. We know he can drag defenders out of their position. But uh, last week, uh, I think uh, people got introduced to Edward, who, go, who came from Celtic, you know. On your debut to score two goals and uh, score the first one just uh, seconds after being on the pitch, you know, it's a really big thing, especially against a club like Tottenham. And I think finally Vieira got that one win, that one result that will give his team confidence to, to, to keep on progressing and keep on playing the way he wants. So the upset, you know, Liverpool have had a really draining match against AC Milan because AC Milan, they just sh showed pure quality. It was a very heavy game on a Wednesday night and uh, maybe they might have not fully recovered yet, but Palace had rested well during the week and will be going into this game having a full week of focus on the Liverpool game. So if they are to upset Liverpool, I think uh, that will be really, really amazing for Vieira's side. Burnley against Arsenal, Burnley coming into this particular clash after their manager extended his stay. Uh, a, a difficult game for Arsenal. However, a match, uh, I know Arsenal fans would like to win this one uh, so that uh, they move from the bottom, <laughs> the bottom three. Uh, but it's a difficult game because if you look at uh, the style of play with Burnley, they play a very tight game. Yeah. They lock their, 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 their defence tightly. They are very organised defensively and uh, they rely on long balls. Long balls have been a problem for Arsenal uh, players to deal with. Uh, Arsenal, uh, for them to win this game, uh, their main objective is not to concede fast. Because you realize that uh, the games that Arsenal have conceded fast, it becomes very difficult for them to come from down and win. Mm. Because uh, they don't have uh, uh, those, those players who can push them when they are down. And uh, that is what is lacking in the team. However much uh, they have great talent in the team, in the likes of uh, Saka and uh, the young boys. Uh, but I think uh, it will be a difficult game for, 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 for Arsenal today. Do you think Burnley also will be looking forward to put their woes behind after getting beaten by Everton in Monday Night Football 3-1? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think uh, when you look at the past and recent seasons, Burnley always have a slow start to the, to the campaign, but they pick up as uh, the game weeks come and go. You know, as you said, they are defensively sound. They have two good centre-backs, Ben Mee and Tarkovsky. Yes. And they have uh, Nick Pope, a great goalkeeper. And... Uh, Arsenal, if they concede first against a Burnley side which uses crosses, which uses set piece to try and get goals, I, I think they'll find it really, really hard to score against them because Burnley defensively, on their day, they are they are they're really organised, sound defensively. Yeah. Navas and slim victory of Arsenal last weekend, right? It was a penalty <laughs> that was converted by uh, Aubameyang, Man. and that squad looks so unfamiliar. Yeah. Oh. Is it attributed to many signings? Did Arsenal sign a lot of players that, you know, no, we're I, getting into the team sheet and then we get surprised? Who is this? Yeah. <laughs> for, for them, I think uh, they, they just didn't make signings that improved them, you know. They, they had no big names. Okay, they brought in Lokonga, who is a great player. Uh, Tavares, they're all great players, but if Arsenal really wants to go back to the big six, again, as many have said, they have to behave like the big six clubs. They, they, if you look at the core Arsenal squad, it's the same guys from last season. You'll still find Shaka, El Neni, all those guys in, in that team. They never really brought that one key signing that can really push this, that one person from another big club who has the desire and the mentality to really be a championship winner. So for Arsenal, I think uh, they, sh they, they spend the most money, but uh, I, th I choose to believe they spend it wrongly. They, they, I agree with you, they didn't spend their money on the right players yeah. uh, because what they needed, they did not need talent. Mm. They needed a winner, yeah. they needed a, a leader. And uh, you look at uh, the, the players that Arsenal is relying, them to lead the, or relying on to lead them are players like uh, Shaka. Uh, I don't know what happens to him when he comes to Arsenal because when he's with Switzerland, he plays really nicely. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to Arsenal, the other game before Norwich, the other game, he's the one who caused them with a the red card. Yeah. He becomes very erratic. Mm -hmm. And these are player whom uh, they are relying on to rally the team. Mm -hmm. If you look at, uh, they have a captain who doesn't speak yeah. in a boomerang. Mm -hmm. Uh, in my opinion, he shouldn't be the captain mm -hmm. because a captain is somebody who is going to drive the team forward, who is going to improve the team by pushing the, the young lads and telling them, hey, let, 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 let's do this for the badge, let's play for the shirt, let's play for the fans. Because mm -hmm. if you look at Arsenal, despite the poor performance, the fans have stuck with them. 
and uh, they owe it to the fans to, to, to perform. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Ateta did not go for the right targets. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, uh, he went for Ben White. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you don't get Ben White. 50 million, look at Varane 34, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. You need a win, you need a leader. The, the, when they lost Luis, when they uh, they should have brought in somebody who is more influential, who, somebody who can drive the team in the midfield and in the defense. Mm. The likes of Patrick Vieira when we were there, the likes of uh, Tony Adams who could drive the team. Yeah. You see that, that that one, they they don't have that. You look at the Manchester United game, whereby you see Bruno Fernandes is on the bench, but he's still trying to encourage the team. We yeah. can do it. We can do it. They yes. need such kind of players. Arsenal doesn't have. Another three points in the back for Manchester City against Southampton, who has had also a shaky start to the season. I think most of their games have ended in draws against West Ham, Newcastle 2-2, and having been beaten the first game of the season by Everton 3-1, and also drawing with United 1-0. Mm -hmm. Pep can steamroll uh, Southampton <laughs> today, you know. That's the thing, because at home, fans or no fans, City will show up. They, they, they don't lose a lot at home. They don't draw a lot, a lot at home. They always go for the win. And their squad, you know, you look at how they played against Leipzig. Leipzig, a team that always pushes forward. And City really pegged them back for a, for a long while in the game. So, so Thompson, uh, I don't, I think when they lost Ings, they lost a lot of goals. I don't think it Who's been be, there striker lately? Redmond? Uh, yeah, you got, you are, And Armstrong? Yeah, they had guys like Armstrong looking for goals, and they lack that one striker. Okay, Che Adams has done great, but he's not like that big man who's going to get you 10 to 15 goals a season, and mm -hmm. it will be really hard for them to go up against the City defence and goalkeeper today. So I just see City going on on their good run of wins. I agree with you because I think uh, City have, uh, have depth. And uh, Pep is going to play a, diff a whole different team from what he played midweek. Yeah. And uh, the players who are there, uh, if uh, you are substituting Sterling with Mares, Mares will still bring in <laughs> another quality, <laughs> another quality, Depth. top quality. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, the loss of Ings uh, lost a lot of goals, as as, as Ken said, uh, simply because Ings was a player who could uh, score a goal out of nothing. You remember mm -hmm. last season, Southampton will be placed, uh, will be pressed uh, in the in the in their defence. They'll make one ball in scores they don't have that right now so they don't have that threat so yeah. if today they sit back city will bombard them and uh, uh, they, they, they may concede a lot of goals tomorrow Tottenham against chelsea in what looks like a super sunday <laughs> can you know two chelsea who's begin tomorrow after what happened to Tottenham against it was weak side. Crystal Palace beat them. Crystal Palace, yeah. Three, three one. Three, yeah. three nil. Yeah, three, three nil in a yeah. game that saw one of their players getting red carded over a small mistake. Yeah. And I think that boils to a manager talking to players and uh, telling them not to, you know, get involved in this avoidable. Avoidable, avoidable skirmishes and, yeah. uh, and, uh, and retaliations. I think that boils to the team discipline. And uh, Tottenham have had a problem. Yeah. With that, last season we had Crystal Palace having the same same problem. Uh, so, so I think uh, he has to come up. The coach has to come up and uh, tell these players to calm down. Mm. Uh, they have injury worries after after midweek also, and uh, it will be difficult for Tottenham to beat Chelsea tomorrow simply because uh, uh, Chelsea have a good tactician in uh, Tuchel and also have a good squad. And they have uh, players who are on form like Lukaku. Uh, the guy will score a lot of goals. Yeah. He'll score a lot of goals this season. Can we conclusively say that man might be the top scorer? He, he has every chance. Uh, Hurricane, him and Ronaldo, uh, it will go either way. He'll score a lot of goals because uh, Chelsea creates a lot of opportunities. And you remember last season, the, the undoing factor was Timo Werner and the other strikers. So you could find that the strikers were not scoring. So the goals could come from the likes of Kina, uh, Kai Havertz from the midfield. Eh? Yeah. But right now, you create it for uh, Lukaku. He has a poor first touch, but he has good positioning. He has the desire to really work hard and he works hard on the field and uh, he will score a lot of goals because the chances will keep on coming mm -hmm. yeah. so chelsea's tomorrow is uh, such a magnificent tie that thomas tuchel wants to continue with this winning and stylish record and mm -hmm. as we speak i think pandits are all giving it to both chelsea and city as the favorites for the title crown do you agree 
Yeah, I, I have to agree right now because I've seen Chelsea out the setup. They don't look like uh, they look like they mean business in the Premier League this season. And uh, also, you, you know, tomorrow they're playing Tottenham. Tottenham had a dismal weekday. Uh, on Thursday, you look at them in the Europa Conference League. Yeah. They could win a game there. And now they are going to play against Chelsea, who will be levels above the team they play in the Conference League. And Chelsea, right now, they, they know they have to win because United, City and Liverpool are not stopping. So they have to beat Tottenham and push themselves further and further up the table before the other big boys play and catch up to them. And the advantage with Chelsea is that they're, 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 they're meeting these top teams early because yeah. remember they have already played against Liverpool yeah. and uh, they were one man down and they still managed a draw. Uh, so they have, uh, they have a good tactician in Tuchel. He knows how to set up the team uh, depending on the opponent. And that is what Jose Mourinho used to do. Study the opponent, set up your team to counter the, the opponent. And uh, if he continues like that, uh, he, will be able to, to, he will be able to win a lot of games and uh, eventually uh, he can run away with two titles. Uh, maybe the, ch the Champions League again and, uh, and, and the Premier League. Yeah. It's possible. In Italian football, AC Milan, after uh, getting defeated by Liverpool, 3-2 in Champions League football, I think Liverpool came from behind, right? Yeah. Mm. Now AC Milan looks at to meet Juve tomorrow, mm. 9.45. I don't know. Is there a likelihood that the, <laughs> the big man Zlatan Ibrahimovic will feature? <laughs> Maybe he may feature. Uh, but uh, AC, uh, I think Juve is, uh, is a little bit weakened by the departure of Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, they will not be as strong. They have Dybala up front now. Yeah, but Dybala was there when Ronaldo was there. <laughs> <laughs> he could create for Ronaldo. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, I think the AC Milan Liverpool tie reminded us of the Champions League uh, years back when Liverpool came from behind again to win. Uh, it was a it was a good game. It was a good game. Any football fan, I'm sure, enjoyed that. And uh, tomorrow, as they meet uh, Juventus, uh, they they put in that show that they put on uh, against Liverpool. They may come out with a, uh, with something in that game. Ken, okay. uh, I think uh, Juve. Having Morata up front, Dybala, I don't. Th I think they'll really lack Ronaldo's 20 to 30 goals in a season, you know. And looking at how they've started the league, until they played uh, Malmo, who are a poor side compared to what they'll play in the Serie A even. <laughs> Going back to the Serie A, it will still be tough for them because they, they only have one point. They're playing AC Milan, who look amazing, you know. Their squad has a lot of young talents, has a lot of desire because last season they failed to to hold on to that number one spot, so now they'll be really pushing for it. And uh, Juve right now in the league is a wounded animal, and the other big boys will look to hurt them, as so as to open that gap between themselves and Juventus. Gentlemen, before we wind up, your parting shot on what happened also on Tuesday, Bayern against Barcelona, ending 2-0 in favour of Bavarians, and that was expected. <laughs> Can we say Barcelona are no longer the heavyweights we were used to? I think we, 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 earlier on... Uh, After this the year, exodus. Yeah, the earlier on this year we said that Barcelona will take two to three seasons and uh, to rebuild. And uh, they, 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 Kuman is Just like your team United. Uh, and no, we, Liverpool we, went through no, something back. For us, we have already rebuilt. Uh, Barcelona <laughs> are starting. Kuman is in trouble. But at least Barcelona <laughs> will take two to three years. You yeah. took a decade. <laughs> because we... <are> <laughs> 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 this guy is an undercover man. <laughs> 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 Alex Ferguson departure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I think uh, Kuman is in trouble. He will get a lot of beating because uh, he has a team that, that has no identity. Because most of the key players who, whom we could identify Barcelona with left. And uh, he has to build a new team. So he needs time. And in, 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 in the Europe, he will get a lot of beating. He, he may not go far in the Champions League. And then now you come home uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the domestic league, he's going against the likes of Ancelotti. So he may win nothing mm -hmm. this season. Yeah. Yeah. So Bayern are the favourites for UEFA Champions League title? They have to be because Nagelsmann has also brought in another style of play, which we saw on Tuesday against Barcelona. You know, they were moving the ball so fast. You know, the past season they were just uh, going forward attacking, but right now they're actually playing it, moving it so well. And it was really beautiful to see it against Barcelona because that's the Barcelona type football that we see. But it wasn't Barcelona playing it. Barcelona were launching balls to Luke de Jong, something you'd never see happen, I don't know for how many years, crosses and all that. So for Bayern, obviously they're the favourites alongside PSG, I think, because of their squads on paper. But for Barcelona, 
it, it, it's so sad to see such a great club in in the current state, but they have to really work and come back from that state they are in right now. It's a development. We're going to be keeping tabs on and see how it pans out. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming through and sharing your insights on international football and the headlines doing rounds on various publications regarding uh, overall international football. You know, it's a difficult assignment interviewing Man United duo in the studio who are very optimistic <laughs> and ambitious of winning titles in the recapture of Cristiano Ronaldo. But thank you and looking forward to see you again and hopefully all the best in your next game. United against West Ham. West Ham. Tomorrow. Yeah. Another Aculean task. Good game. Good game. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna keep tabs on that and of course thank you for tuning uh, to the show and thank you for being part of the program to all those who facilitated the success of this show a big shout out to you and let's continue with the conversation hashtag touchline y254 y254 channel at your maxwell thank you and god bless